sponsored by the Elder Scrolls Online Morrowind. The Zelda series has always been known for music. Whether we're talking about the famous classic theme, recurring themes, some fan favorites, or even the series' tendency to use music as an in-game mechanic. But how much do you really know about Zelda music? This is Jason from Curse, and today we're talking about the origins and clever uses of Zelda's music over the years. The main theme of The Legend of Zelda is one of the most famous pieces of video game music ever written. It's a theme that has become synonymous with video game history and lore, and has been covered by orchestras around the world, and it almost didn't happen. Composer Koji Kondo originally was working on an NES arrangement of Maurice Ravel's 1929 classic Bolero. After some time working on a reduction of the piece that would have worked with the NES's limited audio capabilities, he discovered it was still under copyright and legally couldn't be used in the game. As a result, he got to work on an original piece as a backup plan. That backup plan is the main theme of The Legend of Zelda. Kondo wrote it in one day. That theme, Kondo's one day backup plan, has endured though in nearly every game in the series since, usually as the overworld theme. However, while it may seem like every game has the same basic music on the overworld, very few games have the actual original theme as their overworld theme. A Link to the Past for the SNES and Majora's Mask for the Nintendo 64 have versions of the overworld theme that are quite similar to the original. But some of the biggest games in the Zelda franchise like Ocarina of Time, The Wind Waker, and Twilight Princess use completely original arrangements for their overworlds. So does that mean the classic theme is simply gone? Not quite. The classic Zelda theme lives on in each overworld theme through a compositional technique called a leitmotif, when a particular theme or musical phrase is used to represent a character or idea. In this case, the leitmotif represents the idea of adventure, vast open areas, and exploration, which is why it is so often associated with the overworld theme of each game. The original Zelda overworld theme shows up as a leitmotif if only for a split second in each of these overworld themes. Here it is in Ocarina of Time, in Wind Waker, and in Twilight Princess. The overworld theme isn't the only one that makes repeat appearances in the Zelda series. Dungeon themes, character themes, and themes tied to specific locations are also weaved through Zelda's musical history. Very frequently, a particular piece of music is tied closely to the plot in some way. Ocarina of Time, arguably the series' most famous entry, features the ocarina as an absolutely plot-crucial item, largely because that's how you learn Zelda's lullaby. Zelda's Lullaby is the name given to this theme by Impa, Zelda's attendant and bodyguard, who says she actually used it as a lullaby in Ocarina of Time. But rather than a lullaby, it's actually Zelda's motif, and the theme shows up in nearly every game since A Link to the Past to signify the presence of the titular princess. The Lost Woods, Hyrule Castle, and themes, as well as countless others, show up frequently in similar circumstances between games, though they always sound distinctly different. Part of the reason the Zelda universe feels so cohesive, despite there being only tangential links between games, is because of these unifying themes. There are emotions and expectations attached to all of these themes, and they all distinctly belong to the Zelda franchise. And that's to say nothing of some of the series' signature jingles. 
From the very first game in the series, Zelda has included music in some way as a major game mechanic. The original game introduced the flute, which is actually a recorder, which warps you to different dungeon entrances on the map and opens the way to another. Incidentally, the six-note melody played on the flute in the original Legend of Zelda is exactly the same as that of the warp whistle in Super Mario Bros. 3. The flute returned in A Link to the Past as another warp item, again mislabeled since this one is clearly an ocarina. But Ocarina of Time began a tradition that has endured through every mainline Zelda game since, making music manually for a variety of effects. Music is a central element of nearly every Zelda game, not just because it's catchy music, but because the music often takes center stage as part of the gameplay. This isn't by accident. Ocarina of Time and Wind Waker are both named for the musical items in their respective games. Some of the most memorable themes in the Zelda series are the ones you play yourself, like Ocarina of Time's Song of Storms. But even more interesting is the origins of some of these songs. Several of the warp songs in Ocarina of Time reference existing pieces of classical music. The Bolero of Fire is one of the most notable, as it bears a striking resemblance to Ravel's Bolero. the piece Kondo originally wanted to use in place of the Zelda theme we all know and love today. The Requiem of Spirit is another ocarina tune that sounds very similar to Mozart's Requiem. Other themes, like the Prelude of Light, Serenade of Water, and Minuet of Forest are titled for their respective compositional styles. Several of these themes also make repeat appearances throughout the series. Composer Koji Kondo is the man behind the musical backbone of the Zelda series, as well as other classic Nintendo franchises Mario, Punch-Out, and Star Fox. While Kondo wasn't an active composer on Breath of the Wild, the franchise's focus on acknowledging its history with musical references and leitmotifs ensures his presence will very much be in the game. But how does he actually come up with the compositions for the games? Kondo said in a 2014 interview that he receives almost no direct instruction from the longtime directors of the Zelda franchise franchise Shigeru Miyamoto and Aiji Anuma. A large part of his inspiration comes from seeing the game and identifying its themes first, then working independently. He doesn't actually start writing the music until he has a playable prototype build of the game to work with. He plays that build repeatedly while listening to different types of music until he figures out what kind of music works well with the game's overall feel. In a separate interview with Polygon, he also said he usually comes up with the main themes of his games while in the bathtub. That's all for now, but keep some of this in mind while you play Breath of the Wild and be on the lookout for those musical tricks as they appear. Tell us your favorite uses of Zelda music in the comments below, and as always, enjoy the game! Sponsored by the Elder Scrolls Online, Morrowind. Try out the new Warden class to harness the power of nature and fight with a war bear at your side.